Welcome to another episode of Human Potential at Work, brought to you by Rue Global Impact. Your host is Deborah Rue, CEO of Rue Global Impact. We now continue the conversation with Huawei Technologies Company. Enjoy the episode. I mean, again, you know, Huawei's uh, uh, concept here is is connected. We're stronger, and you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, we we believe in trying to bring uh, every connect everyone everywhere, and uh, uh, we'll continue to do that. Uh, ultimately, Huawei's focus is on the customer, uh, whether that's a, a consumer buying a smartphone or the the operator buying infrastructure equipment or some small enterprise, you know, buying a, a router. The the focus is always on the customer because ultimately that's what we're here for. And, you know, uh, we need to make sure that, um, you know, we're bringing that across the spectrum. It, it shouldn't matter, you know, whether it's a, a person with disability or it's a person, uh, you know, the average uh, guy off the street. I mean, we need to make sure that we, we connect everyone because, uh, again, everyone, uh, you know, from a society, if connected, we're definitely stronger and we're also looking um, you know, we're, we work together and we are, are better together. So I think um, uh, if we look at some of the things that we've done, Huawei has done, I, there was a, um, a tech, some technology for one of our phones where we are uh, helping, where it helps uh, 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 blind people understand and see they can't necessarily read the words or not, or let's say vision impaired, not necessarily blind, but vision impaired so that it helps them understand uh, what's going on in the book. And, it, and it's like an uh, addition to a book. So you, they go through the book and the, and the, the phone uh, will help, uh, help uh, verbalize the, the, the pictures and so on. So it's, uh, it's interesting. And now, uh, I know that you've, uh, you heard the story about uh, we're repurposing um, older generations of phones uh, in the Amazon rainforest. And what they're using that for is uh, we're taking these phones and, and, and repurposing them and uh, using them as listening devices across the Amazon to listen for um, po uh, what we would call, uh, I don't know what they call a, a logger who's a yeah, illegal company. loggers. Yeah, <clears throat> legal logging, basically. Um, they're listening for the specific sounds of the chainsaws and then it, and then it, alerts uh, through a system and then the authorities can can go and track that down so that's that's some of the things that we're we're doing working with communities and working with countries to uh, support their efforts to uh, help address you know uh, everything from uh, people with disabilities to climate change so yeah and I must tell you I'm so wild I'm so wild by what you're doing with your tech for all tech for good digital inclusion and when I saw that, the rainforest, and I believe it's also happening in Africa. It, yeah. You've got it in some places in Africa. But one thing that I, in the first place, it has is so cool that I get very excited. But one thing that they found when they were, they, they once again, were using old, older, um, old cell phones, along yeah. with solar power and things like that, to listen to the forest so they could hear within three mile radius if logging starts you know you can hear the chainsaws chainsaws very you know you can hear it it's very distinctive but they also found that there was one time when they were listening because they're always listening to you know try to protect we've got to protect you know our forests yeah. and one time they were listening and they heard the monkeys start just chattering and getting all upset and they realized that there had been an earthquake so mm. then you start thinking about what else could we learn? Could we be listening for fire? Because in the first place, fire, when fire burns, which we have California burning right now, we've mm. had terrible fires in right. Florida. Can right. we please use this technology to help the people in California and right. Florida? This is ridiculous. We are slicing off our own necks. This is, mm -hmm. this is not who we, this is not who the America is. It is not who we are, but it, we could, we, and the, the animals will warn us that there's a fire. So Absolutely. we could actually learn from the, there's so much we could learn from these technologies. And I know there's another technology called track AI, which is so powerful. And what it is allowing, it is allowing ophthalmologists to better diagnose certain, um, certain vision impairment uh, mm -hmm. problems and they can diagnose it earlier so children don't die and that right. children maybe they won't lose their eyesight or maybe we can catch it in time that they only lose partial 
a part of their, their eyesight. And I was talking to a friend of mine the other day that works for a large telecommunications company and, and he was in Europe and this happened to his son and they caught it in time and his son is blind, but he's alive and mm. you can have a wonderful life being blind. I mean, right. but early diagnosis. And he said, Deborah, in the United States, they're not catching this because they don't have this technology. They're not catching it and children are dying and babies right. are dying. And it's like, wait a minute, what? No, no, what? this is surreal what's happening. And we as Americans, we have to pay attention to this. And one thing I would say to you, Tim, and this is probably a really big question, but what can Americans do to stop what's happening? Because I'm looking at it and I really dug in deep. I've dug in deep to see what is this? And is this, is this true? Does And also I go over to China and I meet, the people and the people are so gracious. And I'm often asked, what do Americans think about us, Chinese people? And I want to say, well, things are pretty intense right now in the United States. And a lot of Americans are sort of just trying to I just understand. And, and understand and just do whatever they can to live a normal life in intense, intense, intense times. And now our government is picking a fight with China to the point that's going to hurt us. And by the way, we don't want them to hurt China either but there is a billion point four plus million it's huge a huge market right I yeah mean, do you know tim there are 400 million chinese that can speak english and there's only 320 million americans just it's size yes for yeah. example and all people matter all people matter we, we the world works better when we can all be included in the starting right. to putting up walls and you're bad and you're rapist no you're Anyway, I'm not right, going right. to get too agitated, <laughs> but the reality is it should be about including all of us. It should, we have to understand it, how connected the world is already. And what we can't start doing is breaking the things that are working in the world. We need to keep improving right. the world, not breaking it more. But what can we do? What, how can we have our voices be heard to help this? Because this is not the world that I want to live in. Right. Well, I think we need to work collaboratively and cooperatively to develop, you know, standards for our critical infrastructure. Uh, I mentioned that a little bit earlier. Um, and the critical infrastructure being that, you know, the 5G, the, the technology, not just the wireless, but also wireline technology and, and developing standards and certification protocols and so on. Um, you know, stopping our, you know, well... <clears throat> And look, stop looking at a, a country of origin, but look at the holistic perspective of every supplier that we, every supplier that, that is part of our supply chain. Um, but also, you know, investing, investing in STEM research. Um, a lot of what Huawei has done and the way we've uh, kind of continued to uh, grow over the years is, is we, we spent a lot of uh, investment dollars in um building in basic research and STEM type research uh, because we're in the realm of starting to, let's say, bend some of the, the laws of physics and so on in order to try and make things work better, to try and carry more traffic and so on. Um, and in order to do that, you have to have to invest in the basic research, but also uh, developing. I think one of the things we're seeing now is that, um, you know, there's so much focus on, on, on profits um, from a lot of companies that were not really spending the dollars to and in, in, in investing in the R and D and the development and uh, and 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 all of these things, so I think we need to get back to that innovative time uh, when we were putting a lot of money into uh, developing as a nation and developing you know our um, capabilities, our understanding, and so on. We need to get back to that point of view. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we allowed some of our big 5G or some of our, sorry, not 5G, but our, our big telecom players, uh, 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 vendors uh, from years past, uh, be absorbed and and kind of uh, disappear from the the marketplace. Uh, we need to get back to promoting and developing that here in the U.S. And I think um, working collaboratively, uh, you know, multiple minds are always better than a single mind and. And it gives insight, it gives uh, innovation, and, and it breeds, you know, that competition that helps develop, uh, has helped develop the tech industry to, to date. So I think we need to continue to do that. 
and um, uh, I think that's that's kind of uh, you know it in a in a basic basic way. I guess it's just investment, it's research, it's uh, you know focus on on the development and and collaboration across the globe. I agree, and I want to talk about a couple more <clears throat> things, but I also want to say. Um, I also think that we can we can each take the time to write to our senators and our Congress people to let them know this is not the America that we want. We want America that's part of the world. We we have been leading the world in technology and communications for years, and but we don't do this alone. We do this with our allies, with our friends, and we we have to, we you have to go to your political parties and tell them no. This is not who we are as Americans. So I, I say to anyone that's on this program that is con as concerned as I am, please reach out to your senators and Congress people and say, come on, we want to participate in the world. We don't want to close our borders. This is not who we are. This, we're capitalist and we're free trade, but also as Tim was just saying, we, it's okay to make a profit, but it can't be your only thing. We have to care about, you know, the people and your employees and everything else. And one thing, there's um, a couple of other things that impressed me about Huawei. Um, Huawei is employee owned. All of the employees owned. It is not owned by the government of China. It is, it is owned by this 190,000 employees. And even Rin, the founder, he only owns like 1.46 or something really small. So this is an employee owned corporation, which we applaud in the United States. And I would also say another thing that impresses me so much is all of the money that you are spending on research and development and tech for good and tech for all. I'm not seeing any other company spend this kind of money right. on research and development. So can you talk about that for a moment? Yeah. Um, from an R&D perspective, we have uh, about 85,000 employees in R&D. Uh, so of that 190, um, close to half is, is uh, in, in R&D and, and works in R&D area. So if we look at um, the, the dollars that we spend on an annual basis, um, that equates to about 15% of our, um, our revenue on an annual basis. Uh, and and that I mean so for example this year we're trending uh, what it looks like is we'll hit about 18 billion dollars this year in invested in R&D um, and and there are you know there are fruits of that labor so uh, we have 21% uh, of the uh, what they call the essential 5G patents so these are the, the primary patents that are needed for um, for 5G technology to be utilized around the world and we hold uh, roughly about 90,000 uh, patents globally that we've acquired over the many, many uh, years um, of, with this R&D investment. Um, but more importantly, I think, uh, you know, again, our, uh, owning an IP and, and sharing that, uh, that patent or that, that development with others is, is key. And if you look at what, you know, Huawei, um, license is about six billion dollars annually uh, we pay in licensing fees to the Microsoft's the Google's and, and a variety of other companies uh, uh, including some of our competitors um, supporting you know the licensing of technologies that they've patented and then we license in turn about 1.4 billion so it's it's un, it's quite uneven we're actually licensing quite a bit more than we are now we may see that trend change a little bit as we go into 5G because we do hold a, a large number of licenses. But I think the, the key thing here, and to your point, is is that it's the investment that you have to make. You have to make this investment uh, to to be a leader, to to develop your industry, um, and you know uh, continue to innovate because uh, that's what it's all about. I mean, uh, you know, as a tech company, continuing to drive um, the the innovation and and the and the the innovation for the customer, not just the innovation for sake of innovation, but the inno innovation that benefits the customer um, or society uh, in a way that 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 helps us all. I think is is part of is probably the most important part. I agree. I agree, and I do want to do a shout out just for a minute about your products because um, Amazon. You can get Huawei products on Amazon. And um, I have a friend of mine, uh, Dr. John Rockford, who is um, in Massachusetts, and he recently 
bought a Huawei product. And I said, well, tell me, tell me why'd you buy it? He said, because it's the most accessible to me. He's a man that's blind. He said, it's very accessible. And then I was curious, how hard was it going to be for him to, to make it work in the United States? And he, he came back and he's like, oh, it was very easy, easy to do. And he, I believe uses T-Mobile. Um, mm -hmm. which you can do the SIM cards with T-Mobile yeah. and other providers are working on this, but he bought Huawei products from Amazon because they were more accessible to him. And often these devices are not accessible to the population of people with disabilities. They're working on it, but Huawei's is already more accessible. Right. And right. so, <laughs> please, so <clears throat> anyway, well, then I'll start looping again and I'll stop doing this. But this is a very, very serious situation that Americans need to get behind. And we need to make sure that our voices are heard and that we're supporting, you know, companies like Huawei that are trying to make the world a better place for everyone. And to remember, Huawei is us. We are all intertwined. I mean, Tim, once again, is in Texas. And so the world works better when we can all cooperate and partner and support each other and applaud innovation. Um, but we need to have our voices heard. We need to be talking about this. We need to be talking to our politicians. We need to be learning ourselves and understanding what is going on. Is it that, you know, they're bad because they have a different flag than we do? Come on. We're smarter than that. We, we're sophisticated Americans. We know better. We, or is it because we're afraid of a little competition? No, 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 no. That is, the competition is part of who we are as Americans. So I really appreciate your time today, Tim. I appreciate everything that you're doing. I appreciate you as an employee that you would take 15% and, you know, use it for social good and tech for all. And when I walked, the, when, I, when I went to Huawei Connect and I saw the tech for good pavilion. I was just blown away. But one thing I found, Tim, was when I left the pavilion and started looking around at the rest, the floors and floors of innovation, a lot of things that I was seeing, like the robot that um, handles the recycling and the way the robot was determining what everything was, I said, well, wait a minute, that's tech for good. Yeah, 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 I know. And then the smart city stuff and the cockpit and the, the right. train stations and the you blew my you blew me away. I, I I have never seen innovation and and so much tech for good, tech for all. I I I've, I came away very changed person after seeing all that. <laughs> well, that's good. I, I think that's the idea, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's not let some politics stop us all from advancing and making sure that everybody can be included, even if you're a person with a disability or you live in a rural area or you live in a country that has a different flag from other countries. Come on, we are better than this. We can evolve. So um, let me turn it over to you to, for last comments and then we'll, I'll, I'll let you go. Well, I think you've, you've covered it pretty well, Deborah. I, I, I would like to thank you for uh, having me on the program today. I appreciate it. Um, but um, I think that's great. And uh, you know, uh, Huawei just wants to continue to do the right thing, serve our customers and, and continue to innovate and bring technology to the world. And uh, that's kind of where, where we'll uh, continue to drive. I agree. And I want to be on the right side of history. And the right side of history is humankind. And Absolutely. this beautiful, amazing world that we all live in. And it's not about, I'm going to protect all my stuff. And I'm not going to, it's, I, that, that's, that isn't helping. That's hurting us. Exactly. And it's hurting all of us. And so we need to... We need to all pull together and be one world. And so I, I believe in the work that Huawei is doing. And I really, really thank you for your leadership and uh, Rin for his leadership and everything all of the 190,000 employees are doing. And, and I apologize. I apologize also for what we're doing because um, it's embarrassing to watch because this is not something I'm used to seeing as an American. And it's, it's really sort of chilling to my heart that we would be acting like this because I know this is not who we are as Americans. So I don't think there's any apology necessary. I think what we need to do is we just need to uh, work together to find solutions that, uh, that, that help everybody and support everybody. So. Well said, well said. Thank you so much, Tim. And I'm hoping you'll come back on and we'll have even better news and be able to say, yay, that was a scary <laughs> part of history, but we're moving forward and everybody gets to be included. So right. I think it's an important time right now, and 
I'm looking forward to it being a very positive solution that we will all win from. So thank you so much, Tim. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.